We all know why you're here. Tarapagos' battle theme is a masterful achievement in musical storytelling. But how did we get here? Why is this song so incredibly climactic? And why is it such a pivotal moment of character development for Kieran? Hello everyone, my name is Roberto Cristian Chelonudis Galapagos de la Tortuga, which you may call me Robbie for short. And today, let's analyze the arguably most sophisticated battle theme in any Pokemon game. There will be spoilers for the entire story. You've been warned. And if you didn't catch Chiropagos in a beast ball, what are you doing? I've loved Pokemon since I was five years old. It's a franchise I'll probably follow for the rest of time. I'm familiar with practically every piece of music from these games, and this theme is no different. Battle Chiropagos was composed and arranged by Go Ichinose, who has worked on music for the Pokemon franchise since the days of gold and silver, with a little help from Toby Fox. Toby Fox has worked on music for Pokemon before Scarlet and Violet, the default battle theme for the Battle Tower in Sword and Shield, which is actually the theme you're hearing right now. When Toby Fox was revealed to have a part in the soundtrack for Scarlet and Violet, many fans were beyond excited, except for me, because I didn't know who the heck this man was before writing the script for this video. His work on the Scarlet and Violet soundtrack focuses almost entirely on the terrestrialization phenomenon in Paldea. He appears in the credits for the following tracks. Academy, the overworld theme. Terror raid battles. Academy ace tournament. Battle Zero Lab, which is the final battle at the end of the main story. Battle Paradise Protection Protocol, which is the battle after the previous one. The overworld and the battle theme for Area Zero. Area Zero Under Depths. The battle theme against Kieran and Chiropagos. And the Chiropagos final boss theme that we'll be analyzing in this video. He also arranged the remix of Ed Sheeran's Celestial, but we can't play that because of copyright or whatever. Toby Fox is famously known for his work on Undertale, a game that narratively manipulates you into being invested in characters that, rationally speaking, aren't real, but psychologically speaking, have an emotional tether to your conscience. You can replay the game after achieving the true pacifist ending, and yet some people choose not to for the sake of not hurting these lines of code you've grown to love. After all, the tagline is Undertale, the RPG where you don't have to destroy anyone. And it's this narrative power that Toby Fox brings to Pokemon's music. For this argument, we'll analyze how the various relevant themes come together. First, let's focus on the overworld track for Area Zero, which starts with a delicate ethereal chime that we associate with the terrestrial phenomenon. As we are presented with this thrilling new space, we are greeted by this unnerving, grandioso chord along with some choral chanting that reminds us of what every adult constantly warned us about. This place is dangerous. Grandioso is Italian for grand, a tempo mark directing the musician to play big, loud sounds. It's a whimsical start that establishes an element of fantasy to an area that provokes a sense of wonder, but also fear. This theme is written in an F major key, which the classical composer Helmholtz has described as embodying peace and joy, but also passing regret. The relative minor of F major is D minor, which is told to invoke feelings of anxiety, and is used sparingly throughout this composition. There's a sense of foreboding that also expresses feelings of grief, likely foreshadowing the death of Professor Sada and Professor Chura. F major is a musically significant chord that calls upon religious sentiment because the church likes emotional and complicated music. Notice how this part, in Nearer My Got To Thee, is written in a 7-8 time signature, and has a syncopated rhythm because it brings musical interest. This became especially apparent when I looked at the sheet music for Arceus' theme, specifically towards the end before it loops back to the start. 
There are multiple silent measures, but what's interesting is that the last 10 measures have a decreasing amount of silent measures as it progresses. We have one measure with only one note, followed by three silent measures, another one note measure, then another silent measure, and it ends with four measures with one note each. This portion can be difficult to count without sheet music and sounds musically interesting. This theme is imposing and makes you feel like the music is creeping up on you. Arceus is considered the god of the Pokemon world, a deity that created the universe and all the Pokemon that live within it, presumably including Terrapagos. Arceus has the ability to change its typing at will, which is very similar to what Terrapagos is capable of and the entire gimmick of terrestrialization. The Area Zero theme then switches gears to appeal to a modern audience with an EDM-style ramp-up and elements that sound similar to an electric sitar. A sitar is a stringed instrument of the lute family, originating from India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. It's also used in traditional Japanese music, and in this case, helps achieve a feeling of curiosity for something alien yet exciting to come. Okay, here's my question. When I do a terror raid battle, what am I supposed to be feeling? Next, let's talk about the terror raid battle theme and it's more upbeat candor. This theme plays during any of the optional terror raid battles found in dens throughout the region, and each battle requires four players to tackle and defeat the terrestrialized Pokemon found inside. The multiplayer aspect of this game mode is an important factor that gives this theme the feeling of determination. Across the entire theme, we hear instruments traditionally used in rock and roll and heavy metal genres of music. The electric guitar is the most famous example. It's used in songs like Ozzy Osbourne's Crazy Train to invoke an energetic sensation within the listener. Or, in the case of Pokemon, to get the player excited. Sword and Shield had to achieve a similar goal to the Dynamax Raid battle theme. Dynamax Pokemon, however, were much more intimidating due to their incredulous size, which is why that theme feels slower and more grounded. Terrestrialized Pokemon are a less intimidating phenomenon, which is why we hear a more optimistic sound at 150 beats per minute. The song starts with an initial buildup of the signature sparkly sound that defines the terrestrial phenomenon. Then we can easily split this song into three sections. Section A introduces a steady and energetic melody. While section B changes that melody to a more subdued tone. Finally, the theme transitions into Section C, which is the main portion that was rearranged for Terrapagos' battle theme. You know, the part we reference within the first five seconds of the video. This is the most important part, the piece that defines my argument for this entire thesis, because it is the most exciting. The final portion after the fact is simply a resolution, in which the melody slows down in order to pick back up to the first section. An interlude, if you will. This is a standard in video game music, and this theme achieves its loop by using an octave jump which simply means that the composer jumped from one note in a specific octave to the same note in the next highest octave. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, 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 do. Glad we're on the same page. The last piece of our analysis involves Kieran's character arc. His story is unlike anything we've experienced before in a Pokemon game. The way this narrative played out may be questionable, but the impact on his character remains the same. Let's segue from the previous section by talking about the electric guitar and its overwhelming presence across Kieran's three battle themes. The first theme highlights his kid-like innocence using riffs from the marimba. Kieran was fascinated by the ogre behind the teal mask because it's part of his family's legacy. When he finally gets to meet her, he's seemingly rejected. We follow this change in attitude through the second theme, which replaces the marimba-like sound with the electric guitar. <laughs> 
It's a key detail that foreshadows his hostile behavior at the Blueberry Academy. The electric guitar is important because it completely overtakes his spinal theme. The main melody is composed of more aggressive and distorted violin sound. <laughs> Violin music in villainous story arcs is a common trope in media, as the violin can be seen as a symbol of aristocracy and power. I find the sound of the violin to be very beautiful, especially when it's played in a major key, like the Smash Brothers rendition of Earthbound's Magicant theme. But when played in a minor key, violins typically sound like the complete opposite. Take Sephiroth's theme, for example. One Winged Angel is a violent piece of music that combines deep brass instruments with dissonant violins to instill fear in the listener. It's a sound that represents controlled insanity, since most villains are calculated but ultimately selfish. Kieran isn't a villain as much as he is an angsty kid with rejection sensitivity, but the parallel still exists. He feels betrayed by the player, and especially his sister, for hiding the Loyal Three's actual story. However, the main source of his trauma is Ogrepan. He's resentful towards Ogrepan for choosing to stay by the player's side instead of Kieran's. Color change in his hair is also worth mentioning, as it resembles the color of the toxic chain on the Loyal Three, which we learned is related to Petrarunt. It likely symbolizes how Petrarunt's mochi brings out the greed in people. Greed is defined as an intense and selfish desire for something. In Kieran's case, the desire to be stronger than the player. This greed helps him catch Chiropagos without any regard for consequences. He got what he wanted, a legendary Pokemon powerful enough to defeat you. And yet, he's still not powerful enough. It's almost as if greed has no satisfying end. And we can experience this unsettling feeling during this next battle theme. This theme samples the song Bad Apple from the video game Lotus Land Story. It's a Galaga-style game that released in 1998, and likely inspired Undertale's main gameplay mechanic of avoiding pixels. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Toby Fox probably referenced Bad Apple as a connection to Kieran's Hydrapple, since this song plays during the game's third level, right before you meet its antagonist. While the references are certainly uncanny, this isn't Kieran's theme. It's Chiropagos' theme. The music begins with a dissonant violin intro, characteristic of Kieran's theme, but that's where it ends. There's no violin throughout this entire song, and the electric guitar has been replaced by a bass that is now in the background, which has a similar sound but doesn't serve the same musical purpose. As this commenter puts it, Kieran's single-minded obsession with defeating the player got to the point where his own theme is shrouded by this one. After the match, he loses control of his Pokemon, meaning he'll never have the power to defeat anyone. Kieran yet again fails, which further crushes his ego. He'll never be good enough. He's useless. And if he's useless, then what's the point in trying? Now that we've analyzed all the different elements of this theme, let's discuss how they all come together. The music starts with the choral chanting that we discussed in the second part, borrowed from the Area Zero Overworld theme and heard often across the soundtrack. You're meant to feel this sense of amazement, in awe of this grandiose creature that stands before you. Then we're met with a brief one-measure interlude in a 5-4 time signature just as the battle begins. A 5-4 time signature always feels like it's rushing to get to the next downbeat, as described by Cadence Hira in her YouTube video explaining every time signature using Nintendo music. The beats per minute have also advanced. We were introduced with the standard 120 beats per minute, and are now at a significantly faster 160. The time for amazement is over. We're in danger and we need to defeat this thing. It's worth noting that this interlude is a musical copy of the sound effect that plays when one to rascalize the Pokemon, and Terrapagos is indeed in its final stellar form. Fun fact, Terrapagos is the only Pokemon with a cry that samples a song from the game. 
Now, the real composition begins, introducing us to this battle with an incredibly fast rearrangement of the Terra Raid battle theme, which then transitions into a complex version of the music we heard in the prior battle with Kieran and Terrapagos. As we established earlier, that was never Kieran's theme, but rather Terrapagos's, with some added background elements from Kieran's multiple themes. The electric bass guitar has been replaced with piano riffs of that same introductory section from the Terra Raid battle theme. In fact, two Harmonies accompany the melody that yet again references the Terra Raid battle theme, likely symbolizing Terrapagos unleashing its power at its full potential. The next section focuses more on Terrapagos as a deity, opting for a melody that continues to reference the Terra Raid battle theme, and that feeling of excitement or determination. The singular harmony here is more subdued, switching back to the choral chanting for an added deified effect. This religious sentiment becomes more significant after we listen to this next transitional portion of the song. Let's hear that again, and this time we'll count the beats in each measure. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, 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 four, one, two, three. You're probably a little lost, and that's okay. I was too before I researched basic music theory. Before this point, the theme plays in a standard 4 4 time signature, the most stable and easy to follow of all the time signatures. The point I'm trying to establish is that they use changes in time signatures to act as single measure interludes into the next section while resuming the same overarching theme. If you remember from the second part of this video, the church likes complicated music to create interest. We follow this change in time signature over to the final section, which returns to referencing the Kieran and Terrapagos theme. This section is the longest and plays for almost a minute, which likely represents the immediate need to quell this creature before the areas you are under deaths cave in and that makes sense. You are battling a creature that is fighting for its survival against strangers intruding upon its slumber in an area, zero, that hasn't been charted since the days of Professor Heath however many years ago. Suddenly a group of explorers shows up and a seemingly random kid thrusts his master ball to capture this being. Kieran's clouded judgment did not allow us to interact with Terrapagos in a neutral way. It became a hostile environment the minute he caught it with the goal of finally defeating the player character. In the prior battle, we heard the same syncopated melody, albeit faster and in a stable 4-4 time signature. Terrapagos appears to be influenced by a collection of myths, mainly the World Turtle and the Turtle Prince, both of which come from South and Southeast Asian cultures. This may explain why this section of Terrapagos' theme is instead composed in a 9-8 time signature, which is usually found in traditional folk tunes. This asymmetry in rhythm, however, could also be a product of that hostile environment I just mentioned, further emphasizing the feeling of impending doom. We can divide this portion of the theme into four subsections, each adding an element that builds upon the last. The first subsection is a melody with some basic percussion to maintain a rhythm. The second subsection adds chanting, which we established to have a religious sentiment. Third adds short bursts from what I believe are string instruments, while also transposing the melody up by one chord. The final subsection adds more percussion and some flair to the harmony from the violins before looping back to the beginning. The theme will continue playing as discussed until the player activates the most important cutscene. We then hear the intro of the Terror Raid battle theme once again, this time in its original pitch, building up to the moment when Kieran finally steps in to help. The 
Rapagos' battle theme is a masterful composition that symbolizes the end of Kieran's journey to find his self worth. This is the absolute best part of this theme because it genuinely makes you feel euphoric. I felt happy for Kieran that he finally realized that his self-worth shouldn't come from how strong he is competitively. Rather, it should be defined by his merit, regardless of where those successes come from. Kieran is a character that many people likely relate to, myself included, because sometimes believing in yourself is really hard, especially when you work on a video you're really proud of. In this moment, Kieran sets his ego aside and finally understands the dire situation they're currently in. Ego interferes with empathy, and wallowing in his feelings of failure only makes this situation worse. After Tarapagos is defeated, we hear that 5-4-1 measure interlude for one last time, before revisiting the Terra Raid battle theme. This rendition invokes a sense of relief, as the melody progressively comes into the foreground. The hidden treasure of the Area Zero has been tamed, and the weight of Kieran's anguish has been lifted. His actions have consequences. His incessant need to become stronger than the protagonist blinded him from having a proper relationship with anyone. Ogre Pond chose to travel with us as the player because she sensed our passion for helping others through Pokemon battles. That didn't mean that Kieran was any less worthy of having a relationship with Ogre Pond. Kieran played a crucial part in convincing the town that the Ogre was benevolent, which I'm sure Ogre Pond is grateful for. Going on this journey to find Chiropagos was the catalyst he needed to start healing from the hardship he experienced back in Kitakami. And we see this unfold during the epilogue. He knows that only we can canonically defeat Nimona in battle, and he steps into a support role, holding back the townspeople from interfering with their plan to defeat Petrarant. Chiropagos' battle theme is a masterful composition because of the many layers of lore and backstory that were required to get here and it culminates in Kieran's journey of self-worth through the realization that one's own merit defines success. I hope you found this video essay interesting. I did a lot of research on this and even consulted my close friend Kyrie, who studied and helped me better understand music theory. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Share this with any Pokemon nerds you know. And as always, I appreciate you being here. Bye!